Hi, and welcome to Divorce on Planet Earth, Kate Sharp's real-world advice for well-intentioned humans, a show for anyone who has shared life, love, and intimacy. So today's episode, how to tell your children about your divorce, doing well with the scariest conversation of your life, part two. I'm your co-host, Jane Prelinger. Your host is Kate Sharp. Hey, Kate. Hey, Jane. Okay, we're picking up today from where we left off last time with part one of this. In the first part of this subject, we talked really about preparing for this scariest conversation of your life, or perhaps the most difficult one. And I think we're all left wondering, what do we actually say when we tell our kids that we're divorcing. Right. I think that's a good place for us to pick up today. Yes. So that would be number six in our 10-point program, right? Yes. And number six was get to the most important messages first and keep them simple. Tell us more. Right. Well, you know, you really don't get a lot of time often in this first conversation. I mean, you can spend a lot of time preparing to have it, and you should, and thinking through all of the pieces of of the message, but it's very common for kids to tune out Mm. uh, or, or kind of get overloaded very quickly. So I think it's important to prioritize the most important parts of the message and Mm. keep them very simple and be okay with the idea that you may have to come back, whether it's that later that day or the next day or another day and finish it. Because as I've, I've already said, but I think it bears repeating, this conversation, as important as it is, is just the beginning in a series of conversations mm-hmm. that will take place in the ensuing days, weeks, months, and years of yeah. your of your child's you know, development. So I think the most important thing to say first is you know we we are not we're getting divorced now how do you say that you can use the word divorce you know with older kids they know what that means but I think you still need to say we're not going to be living together anymore Uh with younger kids I said who don't even know what divorce means really I I sometimes suggest people say we've decided we are not going to be married anymore Uh which means we're going to be living in two different houses Mm. now the question often comes up about what if we are not sure it's Mm -hmm. going to be permanent? Or do we have to use the word divorce? That sounds so scary. Could we just say we're going to be living apart? If you really don't know, if it's really a trial separation. Right, I was I was wondering. You know, that's a that's always a complicated question. I like to spend a lot of time with a particular couple talking about it. I I think if you can say something definitive, it's better. Mm -hmm. Because you know, children have a always have a fantasy of reconciliation, right. and if it, and it's once people have separated, just the the reality is statistically, it's very uncommon for them to get back I, together. It, right. Uh, and if you think it's likely headed in that way, but it's too painful for you to think of it as yes. permanent, then I, I I think if you can say something definitive, it's it's better. I, I like to say you can always add good news into their lives, but prolonging bad news by thinking you're ripping the bandaid off slowly is. Is, is not a great that's a truly important point yeah so so that's the first part is to say you know we've we've decided and we talked in our last episode pe- people haven't listened to it they might want to go back and listen to part one of this yes. conversation what we talked about the preparation of a shared narrative a story about yes. what's happening and why and getting on the same page so mm-hmm. hopefully you'll are on the same page we're not going to be married anymore full stop yeah I think it's important to make the point that you're not happy about this. Uh, you, you're resigned, but you're not happy about it. And it's not a sudden decision. You know, you don't want your kids to mm. think that you had a fight and you impulsively decided to divorce yeah. or that you're mad at each other and you decided to divorce. You, you know, especially with younger kids, a lot of parents worry about sending a message that just because you're angry at somebody, you can break up a family. So you do want to say... This is something that we have been thinking about for a long time. We have really worked on trying to stay married. And after a long time of trying and working, we've sadly come to the conclusion that we can't be married anymore. Mm -hmm. Something that comes up occasionally, and we've talked about this in in prior episodes, is the question of whether you should say that you just don't love each other anymore. Uh I think kids will often ask, don't you love mommy or don't you love mm-hmm. daddy? This is a matter of some controversy. I think it's best to say we don't love each other anymore 
but we support each other as parents. The reason for that is that, yeah, I think to understand shades of love or degrees of love is something that we all have trouble with. Many people want to convey the idea that they still love each other as people. But I think words like respect, support are less loaded for kids who really can't understand why if you still love each other as people, you can't stay married. After all, some of the best marriages, you know, have lost some of the romantic luster. Well, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Kate, this is a really important point. What about when people say, we'll always be a family? Yeah, I I think That's fine to say. What is important about it is what you're communicating about what that means. Mm -hmm. There are sort of like fine distinctions. To say to a child, you will always have a family, but your parents won't be married anymore. We'll be living in different places. You'll be spending time with us separately. And and I think you should say that in the beginning, even if your hope is to do some things together as as a, quote, family. Yeah. Because you're trying to help kids understand something that is almost unimaginable in the beginning. So a clear signal that, yes, you you have one family. You still have two parents. We are still going to take care of you together, even if it's not at the same time. We're going to make decisions about you together. Uh, We're going to talk to each other about you. We will, you know, later you can talk about, we will still be at your school events or, Uh you know, whatever the decision is. So the communication that you know you're not going to have two families. In other words, you're not going to have a dividing line between you know sort of down the middle of yourself. But there's a restructuring is a is a good thing to communicate. I think what's confusing is to try to finesse it or take the sting out of the really big yeah. changes that are going to happen by being vague or trying to soften the blow about the idea that you really are going to be going back and forth between two people who are both separate. They're separate. They're personally separate, even if they're joined through their love of you. Right, right. Do you feel like you want to let kids know how you're feeling about this? I do. I mean, I think the, the feeling that goes along with the idea of divorce is sadness. I mean, there are a lot of other feelings. There may be anger and hurt and how much of that to include in your narrative is something that you will talk about. I think to say, you know, we are, we are sad and we expect that you will have lots of kinds of feelings about this. And we want you to feel like you can come to us and talk about them anytime. Mm -hmm. You can talk to either one of us, uh, is, is important to give kids permission to have what other, whatever, Feeling reactions yeah. they have then and yeah. over time. And if you're – a lot of parents worry that they're going to lose it, that they're going to cry. And, right. Um, what do you I, feel about that? I think you should cry if you yeah. are going to cry because that is the thing that goes along with what you're saying. Yeah. I, I don't – I think you should spend enough time preparing that you don't have a total meltdown. Right. But you're – one of you or both of you may may cry, and I think that's a good time for the other person to step in and help out mm. and say, you know, daddy's sad. I'm sad too. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, carry the load of the conversation for a little bit so the other mm-hmm. person can get it together. That's a great message you're sending in supporting yeah. each other and having the conversation. Because I, another part of this messaging is that we are not, you know, blaming each other. You can uh-huh. get there. Nobody's at fault. We, and And you, this is important, you, kid or kids, are not at fault at yeah. all. This is an adult decision. It It's only to do with us. It has nothing to do with you and your brothers and sisters, if mm. that's relevant. You didn't do anything to cause it. You can't do anything to undo it. Yeah. We're not looking for you to behave extra good, you know, to yes. be extra good yeah, or well-behaved yeah. or get good grades or anything. This is really crucial. Yeah. Um, it is not your fault. I think the other thing to do, so those are sort of the emotional pieces, yes. or at least the bullet point. Yes. The other thing to do is obviously stop. You know, if they have questions along yeah. the way, stop and answer them. And answer them without worrying about whether you're going to get to the bottom of your list, of your checklist yes. of things yes. that you have to say. Follow your kids, I right. guess, where they go in the in the right. conversation. The really important 
thing you want to get to them as soon as you can is what you know, the concrete things that you mm-hmm. know you can tell them mm-hmm. about what's going to happen. What when this it's, is going to look like. Right. Yes. Exactly. What this is going to look like for them. Explain what you can about the living arrangements, mm. the timeline, and anything you've managed to work out, even if it's an interim agreement about time sharing, mm. you know, when they're going to spend time with each of you, including, you know, who's going to be driving them to school, who's going to be picking them up, whether they're, um, so if it happens um, near a holiday or if there's a particularly important holiday in the, the life of your family, that special day, like Christmas or something. Yeah. Kids will often say, but wait, are we all going to go to grandma's for Christmas? Yeah. They'll do this in July sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know, have an answer for that if you can. It's also perfectly fine to say, we haven't figured that out yet, Mm. but we will. Mm. And as soon as we have, we will let you know. You can also say, if they say, well, I want us to all go, you can say, yeah, there's a lot to work out. We're certainly interested in how you each feel and your ideas and thoughts, but we are going to figure it out. Right, 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 right. Any room for any reassurances here? Yeah, I think I, I think on the one hand, I want to caution parents against trying to spin this as a good thing. Yeah, you know, not to be overly reassuring because you don't want to tamp down right their your kids' ability to express their anger, their fears, yes. that whatever. But I think they need to be reassured that everybody's going to be okay. Uh-huh. Yes, there are going to be big changes. Yes, sometimes they're going to be hard. Yes, this is a big disruption. But in the end, we are all going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does this lead us into number seven? I think it does, which is be prepared for any reaction. Yeah, I feel like it's really hard to predict even if you know your children well, what they're going to do in Mm. the face of this information. When I'm helping parents to prepare for this talk, I will often say, what do you imagine? Like, tell, let's talk about your child. Mm. What do you think they know? What do you think they don't know? Do you think they'll be surprised? Parents who have have not really been fighting often think that their children will be completely surprised. Uh People who have been fighting think their kids sometimes won't be surprised. Yeah. People who have whose children have said, are you going to get divorced? Yes. Or have overheard them threatening divorce, expect that their children won't be surprised. I find it's very, even with all of that information, that kids will often throw us curveballs. They just don't, what they know consciously right. may not be what comes out spontaneously what they you think they know they've repressed like so so you really can't know i mean on a personal level kate i remember when my parents told us that they were going to get divorced and i think they did a lot of things very quote unquote well but i remember having i mean they had been fighting for years let's face it but i was shocked Uh Uh-huh. Shocked, shocked, shocked. I don't know why that is, but I remember a feeling of complete and utter shock, which was probably surprising to my parents, given what had been going on in the family. How old were you? I was young. I was probably about eight. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me that you were shocked, because that was your normal. Good point. And the idea of parents not being together is so... Especially, I don't, you know, if you don't have a lot of friends whose parents are divorced, yeah. and especially if you're young, it's yeah. just so kind of unimaginable. Yes. Um, I think in our, you know, we're of a certain age. <laughs> it was even more unusual. Yeah, but it was. But I, but, I, but I think you're making a really important point that kids will be shocked sometimes even when they want it, that some part of them is relieved. Yes. It's also true, like I remember when my parents told me I was nine, and I was also shocked, even though it was a more of a cold war than a hot war in my uh-huh. Not a lot of overt fighting, but a lot of withdrawal from each other. Okay. And I was, you know, picking that up and yes. not, you know, feeling sad all the time without knowing why and that kind of thing. When they told us, I was completely surprised. But because of the kind of kid I was, mm. I didn't want them to see that. Uh, so I pretended. You, oh, okay. Yeah, I said yes. that I wasn't surprised. Yeah. Um, I was, however, totally devastated. It was just yes. my tough, tough yes. girl exterior. My my sister, who was much, much younger, wasn't surprised. Mm. She was so young that, you know, she, I don't know, like her imagination had allowed her to play with the huh. idea of a different 
Yeah. She actually was the person who brought it up. She was she was five. Did she? I think she was actually I think she was four. Four or five. So yeah, I mean the point is you really can't you can't know. And so some kids will have temper tantrums, some mm-hmm. kids will cry, some kids will get really angry, some kids will shut down, some kids will ask what's for dinner, some kids will yeah. run in their room and shut the door, yes. which is what I did, even though I said I already knew. Right, right. Um, and you just kind of have to go with it. And so if for the kid, sometimes parents will say, what if they do go in their room and shut yes. the door, should we follow them? I'd say give them a minute and knock gently and say, hey, you okay? Can I come in? Sit on the edge of their bed? rub their back but if they say no give them the space go back in 15 minutes wait for them to come out if well teenagers. that brings us right into number eight as well which is be prepared to stop and pick up again later yeah you you probably won't get it all in and at some point you'll you'll see you might see a shift in your kids from being very attentive to you know fidgeting or asking if they can leave the room stop just stop yeah if one stays and wants to talk more that's fine Uh uh-huh you can you know fill the other one in later but don't put too much pressure on yourself to cover all the bases Mm. this is one of the reasons i suggest doing it over a weekend so that you have time to finish out the basics before the kids go back to school or yeah have to go to work yeah that makes sense I mean, our next, I'm thinking our next, which is number nine, I mean, we alluded to this when I asked you, what if there's a, a war within the family, within the household, after you've informed the kids that you're getting divorced? But nine, very important. Do your best to co-parent respectfully over the next few days and into the future. Right. I, your kids are dealing with enough, right? Mm-hmm. Even, as we were saying, even if the marriage has been kind of devolving for a long time, the the being told, the sort of, I, w- I was about to say finality, it is it is a kind of finality. It's actually the beginning of, yeah, of, true uh, as well. of things, but it, yeah. it really, it's, it's big. They don't also need to, they really need not to be burdened with any conflict between the two of you. Now, that's saying a lot because the conflict is what brought you there yeah. and it can be heightened after a painful conversation with your children that especially that one if one of you really doesn't want to be having it well you know doesn't even want to be splitting up to the extent that the two of you can keep your kids needs front and center uh, while you're still living in the same home try to remain focused on them and uh, behave yourselves frankly it's it's really helpful what I'm not, I'm not saying suddenly become best friends mm-hmm. or act as though you would if you were in a good marriage because that just confuses. So confusing. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really confusing. You may need to divide up your time with your kids. Uh, you know, instead of doing yeah. things together, you know, divide up the Saturday and one of you take one and one of you take the other and then switch. Or, you know, yes. if you have one kid, just sort of one of you go off and do something with friends on part of the weekend and the other in some way so that you're not actually together with the kid a lot of the time um, as a way of keeping the peace. But they're just, this is sort of one of those moments where they're incredibly fragile and need you, yes. and need you to be there for them in the way that you would have when they were younger. Yeah. And then as far as into the future, I mean, that's, seems like it goes without saying and it's, it's a huge topic. It's a huge yeah. topic. We always talk about it. Yeah. Um, but one of the one of the big factors that determines whether this will remain, you know, a sad moment or maybe hopefully the saddest moment in your children's lives versus a really bad developmental turning point for them. Yeah. Is the extent to which parents can protect kids from their own conflict or mm. put them in the middle. Mm-hmm. So set the stage now for that and when you're having when you're talking to your child about your divorce talk about the other parent in the same way you would if you wanted to stay married happily mm. that's a good rule of well, thumb you, you that's actually really important and i want to just emphasize the word respect and respectfully more than love more than any of it the idea of treating each other and your kids with respect during this difficult time seems to be an incredibly important idea. I agree with you. 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. Kate, I want 
to shout, you to shout number 10 from the rooftops, so to speak, okay? This is so important and so difficult. Number 10, don't put too much pressure on yourselves to get it exactly right. Yeah, this one is so, so, Mm. so, so important. I think uh, we all put, I mean, I, I remember having this talk with my own kids Mm. uh, 25 years ago. My ex-husband and I went and talked to somebody, to a mental health professional about how to do this. Always a good idea. Yeah, never a bad idea. And I just was so focused on how to do this in a way that was going to, I don't know, what I thought we could do to you know ease the pain. I certainly didn't want to do more damage than necessary. And I didn't want to be having the talk, frankly. Yeah. Of course it didn't go, you know, the way I had scripted it but what I've learned since then is that all of what we're talking about is really important the planning the preparing the 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 thinking about when where and what to say all really important Mm -hmm. but it's the process of having a conversation with your co-parent in a way that ends up you know, and trying to to figure out, you know, where is that overlap in the Venn diagram and how can we do this respectfully? That conversation is the beginning of a new kind of conversation, of talking to each other in a new way as co-parents rather than as romantic partners. And I feel like it's the beginning of creating a feeling, like a culture of co-parenting in your mm-hmm. family, in your new yes. reconfigured family. What kids remember most is the feeling that that they that you conveyed while you had this talk and if it was mutually respectful right your favorite word because it's a great yeah. word and honest and kid focused and caring and loving of them that is what they will remember kids tell you they remember i think i remember the words that my mm. parents used but i've been told that i'm not right i'm i've been told that uh-huh. what i'm remembering is more like a patchwork quilt of of yes. conversations that we had both that day and then over subsequently time. Yes. yeah over time i've i have memories that i'm really you know i'm really sure these all happened on the same day turns out they were weeks apart mm. but what i do remember is the feeling between my parents and, you know, how they seem to feel about the event, how they seem to feel about each huh. other. There was lots they did wrong, but one thing that they did well was despite the configuration of events and how they felt, and they felt quite differently yes. from each other, is that they did convey a sense that this was a mutual decision and that they were very concerned about the impact on me and okay. that they were going to continue to be my parents and make decisions about me together. That's what I really remember. Okay, those are fundamentally, in a way, reassuring ideas. Yeah, for a kid. Yeah, I mean, you 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 mentioned that you had some memories of this conversation mm-hmm. that you know the, the, your parents had with you when you were a child. Do you remember the feeling that you took away from it? Well, I do remember. I mean, this is just sort of. Um, coming to my mind right now, and I don't know if it's relevant, but I do remember they were behaving unusually well hmm. with each other, and my mother was a bit dressed up. <laughs> yeah. So it felt like a noteworthy occasion of some sort, and they looked good and um, were contained in a way I hadn't seen in a while. So I think, sadly, I maybe thought the announcement was going to be some kind of positive thing. Like, wow. we're going on a family trip. Or uh-huh. I don't know what I could have thought it was, but that made it all the more dashing. I think they handled it well, but I think it was just so fun. Well-ish. I don't remember the words. I just remember my incredible confusion that things looked better than they had for a long time, but actually the news was devastating that's so that's i mean it's really powerful and painful also i think interesting in that it makes an important point about you know treating this in the way it actually should feel in other words that we can't spin this as there's nothing there's no good right there's nothing to feel good about right Right. now it's not an exciting new adventure right we're not going to get in the car and drive somewhere special right I think you're speaking yes. to some sense of disconnect. Exactly. Between or just the way they present incongruence. Mm-hmm. And I guess it can be just much more confusing for our kids and more difficult to get through when what you're seeing doesn't match the words you're hearing. Mm-hmm. That's so confusing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's really important. 
I've said this before many times and so in various forms, and I'd, I'd like to, to end with it, which is that in parenting in general and in parenting in divorce, there really isn't any way to get it really right, especially not every time, but that the effort, right, that you put yes. in to remain child-centric, child-focused, to the extent possible to remain respectful of your co-parent, to convey a sense of respect, to, you know, remind your children over and over again that you love them, that you are there to take care of them, that none of this is their fault, that you are open to talking with them when they want to, when they need to. And I guess this is a point I should make here because I haven't made it anywhere else. Don't, you know, once you've told your kids about about the divorce, you're going to want to check in with them a lot and make sure mm. that they're okay. But part of doing a good enough job here is not peppering your kids with questions Constantly. all the time. Yeah. Um, remaining open so they feel they can come to you, never, you know, not getting too anxious or angry at what they say, yeah. but just sort of remembering that this is hardest on them. Yes. Even though it's not their fault, which is a hard irony. But do sort of try to check in with them every day or two, maybe. Mm. How are you doing? Sort of open ended questions and look for moments, you mm. know, the right they, moments. Yeah. Look yeah. for them and, and, look for moments where they seem to want to talk about it, including when they ask questions that are divorce related, but seem unimportant. Or if they make statements like about the divorce, like, you know, I want to spend half my time with you and half my time uh-huh. with dad. Don't assume that means that, that dad has been coaching them to say yes. that. Because very often if you dig below the surface of questions or comments that kids make, you'll get to something else. So, very often when a child says that, it's not that they're coached to ask for that. It's that what they're saying is, I want to spend a lot of time with both of you. Yeah. And I have a friend who spends half their time or yes. half seems fair or something. Yeah, I don't want to lose one of you. Exactly. So as long as you can remain focused on your child, create a sense of safety, of mutual respect between their, the, you know, yourself and the co-parent, and keep, try to shield them from having to feel guilt or fear, that's hard enough. Oh, the, yeah. It's the it's the process of trying to do that, that yes. the kids and and self correcting when you've kind of made a wrong step. Yes, because we we all do. And, How can we not? You know, yeah, you can't always hide your pain. You can't hide your anger, your disdain. Yeah. But you can't do it when you're married. Yeah. Even even you know happily, you know, take those moments as opportunities to show your child that you're willing to be wrong. You're willing to apologize. You're willing to self correct. These are very powerful messages mm. that will serve them well through the divorce and and in life as a way of modeling good That's behavior. That's exactly right. Well, Kate, a painful but really important topic. Thank you. And also thank you to our listeners for listening to Divorce on Planet Earth, Kate Scharf's real-world advice for well-intentioned humans. And if you'd like to know right away when we have a new podcast or video, we invite you to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or on Twitter – at Divorced for Humans, that's Divorce, the number four, Humans, and on YouTube at Divorce on Planet Earth. You can learn more about Kate and what she's writing and thinking about on her blog, DivorceOnPlanetEarth.com. If you have an idea for a future podcast, please write to us at info at DivorceOnPlanetEarth.com. We hope that what you hear on this show will be helpful. But since everyone's situation is different, our content is not meant to be a substitute for clinical advice or recommendations. I'm your co-host, Jane Prelinger. Your host has been Kate Scharf, and our wonderful producer is Eric Peguero. See you next time. (music) 